anything of the time. I, I'm a little confused of, 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 of associating a troll with Microsoft. Is no, Microsoft considered no, 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 no. This is Macrosoft. Mac it, this is a tiny software company. Well, no, no. Don't, don't record Mac that. Uh, this is a this Microsoft. is a market leader. Trying to understand the problem. No, this so so I my company is being sued by Macrosoft. They are not necessarily a troll, okay? Although some people refer to them as one. Um, um, Losis is one, not Microsoft. Well, Macro. I, I know Microsoft is one of the largest patent holders in the United States. Right. So this this firm is is Macrosoft. Yeah, Macro S -S -S and S O L D E. Yeah. Right. So they're right. It, it, yeah. So go ahead. Is, is there any kind of patent insurance? Yes, that's a very good point. You can buy, um, I, I know um, about $40,000 a year you can get into a... Um, uh, I get $1,000 for Titan insurance on my home and a refi, right? That's what half a million. So, so I can right. I can speak to that because I mean I run a business, so I spend a lot of money on the insurance, right? Different types of insurance. So you have your overall overarching um, uh, business insurance that costs you maybe a couple thousand dollars a year for a couple million dollars. Then you have the um, um, error and omission insurance that costs you a little bit more, maybe five to six thousand to eight thousand dollars a year, uh, covering you for a couple thousand dollars, a couple million dollars. And then you have the uh, what you get hacked insurance. Um, again, cost you a couple thousand dollars. By now you're at the ten thousand dollar range. Okay, just so you know. Um, and then the so I thought E and O. Okay, error and omission. Error and omission should mean if I unknowingly infringe somebody else's patent, why well, it should be covered? Well, if you read the whole thing on page four hundred and forty-two. <laughs> it spells out that it doesn't cover patent infringement in particular. So that is a uh, that is another uh, that's a joke, by the way. <laughs> um, but the fact is, ENO coverage umbrella, well, business umbrella coverage does not cover um, any of any of the above. So you need the the umbrella just so if people step into your 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 um, office and break an arm or something, uh, you get covered. And then you need ENO, and then you get hacking because you chances are you have computer systems. So if you're sitting here and you run a business, chances are you have a computer system that could get hacked, and and your your customer information may get exposed. So that's a hacking insurance. Now there is this uh, patent infringement insurance that you could buy. Um, um, so that's that. Yeah. Maybe maybe a question for Wong Carla or something like that. If you offer this to small developers and you take just a small amount, just following the whole long tail business model, you can make a lot of money insuring small developers, right? If everybody just paid X percentage subscription fees a month, and of course it's kind of weird because you might be. So while Rick is thinking, his head is turning how to make a lot of money. <laughs> now, I, I want to, I want, no, no, I want to address this point because this is one of my take home point that I want to make this meet up about. So, um, and thank you for skipping everything, right? Um, <laughs> no, this is important because what I'm seeing um, a as part of this industry is that um, thanks to Apple, thanks to Google, we now have productization of developers, if you will. We are now figuring out a way to launch a business at a very low cost because of the App Store, because of uh, Marketplace, because of the cloud, right? now. Payroll and and a lot of things are on the cloud, so you you don't need to spend a lot of money to start your business. So that is productized, and and allow you to launch a business in a very low cost. So therefore, you have a lot more smaller business coming up. Now, these patent holders figuring out, and they're saying, well, rather than suing micro, well, rather than suing um, Rim or Google and get a big payout at the end of the day, I would just sue these people get a thousand dollars a month, but I sue a thousand of them, I still get a million a, a month, right? So they figure it out. So I'm hoping, as, as you were, you, you were, you were um, 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 getting into, the third leg of the puzzle is the defensive side, right? Um, whether it's, it's Article 1 that comes up with a 
meaningful way to find prior art or some legal system to productize the defense, um, a new way of defense got to happen within this, this puzzle. Now, I don't know, and, and, and I'm hoping this will be a great take home point of talking to your neighbors, to your lawyers, to everybody, and I'm hoping this meetup can give rise to perhaps such a system. And, and slightly more than just developers getting together, because we can all get together um, all we want. If there is no one from the, from the professional, from the legal or defensive side that, that come up with a new system um, to help, it, it, it still is just, it just us little guys getting together. <laughs> Yeah, AJ. Do you have um, apologize to the Supreme Court? Are there opinions or something? How do they afford to do all that stuff? You know? Well, that's, that, I mean, that's, that's, that's the crux of the problem. It's the cost of getting yeah, that done yeah. every time you change something. Yeah, rough the mic. So, so this, is, this is exactly the crux of the problem, which is it, it's prohibitively expensive to defend a patent suit. It's prohibitively expensive in many cases to evaluate each one of the patents. Um, and expensive? Right. Right. So, yeah. Can you repeat questions before asking back here? The, the question was raised, how do you deal with this because it is so expensive to do some of these legal tasks associated with these patents on the defense side? That's the question. How do we deal with that? Um, well, traditionally, you hire a lawyer, and if you need a non-infringement opinion or an invalidity opinion, which is what we're going to, you know, a couple of things we're going to talk about, you know, you could pay between ten and twenty-five thousand dollars for that particular opinion. Some more, some less, depending on the individual situation. A complicated validity opinion could go fifty to one hundred thousand dollars, easy. Um, and that's an opinion. And that's an opinion that does not deal with the legal issues. That gives you some comfort that it's not going to give you comfort that you're not going to be sued. It gives you comfort that there is a good faith argument that you don't infringe or that patent is not enforceable. The, the trouble with the troll situation, the MPE situation, is they don't care about that. Okay. Their whole business model is to assert a patent, dubious or legitimate, it makes no difference to them, and extract some revenues, some fees for you. Yeah. If they get one person or one company that has a really good lawyer or a high-priced uh, you know, attorney in their pocket um, situation where they're able to successfully defend themselves against it, is that enough precedent to throw it out for everybody? Can one person basically who's got money go after this company in a reverse and shut the whole thing down? Or is it just a bully factor where unless you can... Uh... It's, it's a bully factor at the end of the day because these cases move along in parallel. I and mean, there's, some, there's some nuances where one particular defendant could take the lead and everybody else could stand back and wait. But that's not the approach that's happening right now, at least as far as I can tell, with the Microsoft case. Everybody has to march along this, this timeline. Everybody has to you know, appear in court at some point in time. Everyone has to provide an answer. Everyone has to come up with their defenses. Everyone has to start answering the questions, the interrogatories. Everyone has to start producing witnesses. Everyone has to go through their company documents and pull off the information regarding their products and their sales and everything off of their internal systems. This is why it's expensive. Well, I mean, I hate to use the word class. Or something okay. that they all, it gets, it, it gets the, the one court gets to have jurisdiction over all of the, the uh, uh, ending all right. claims. So when I was a kid, we played in the sandbox. And when one kid started beating up on all the rest of them, all the rest of the kids in the sandbox ganged up and took care of the bully. Right. Okay. One-on-one, -on -one, the bully versus individual, the bully's going to win. It's not until that group combines forces and combines resources and stands up and said, no, we're not going to do this. Now, I, 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 this is a perfect lead in because Z was instrumental in opening these discussions with regard to the Microsoft um, litigation. And Z spent countless hours, I spent countless hours trying to get 
to herd the cats. I'm sorry, that's what you guys are. You're all cats. <laughs> and trying to, I mean, it's great that we've got you all in a room tonight, but when you leave here, you're all gonna go in your own separate directions. And you all think your case is better than somebody else's case. And you all think that your settlement opportunities are better than the other person's settlement opportunities. And you're all hiring your own individual lawyers who say, Tori doesn't know what the hell he's doing. Why would you ever hire him to do this? So we spent weeks doing this, right? And what, what Womble did because of the flexibility of our, our law firm and some of the pricing things that we're able to do, we tried to offer a flat fee. Boom, here's what it's gonna cost. Here's where it's going to get you if we aggregate 20 of you guys, 10 of you guys, 50 of you guys, you each put a little bit in the pot, we'll fight on behalf of all of you. Um, didn't, you know, we learned a lot. We talked to a lot of people. Everybody thought it was interesting, but it's not the way it's done, you know, on a day-to-day -day basis. All right, at this point, I, I'm going to ask the questions to wait, okay? Because <laughs> we have something that I think we'll address a lot of the questions, may not be, but let's, let's wait till the end and we'll have everybody here for you to fire on, okay? <laughs> so, um, well, yeah, if, if I may, just get back to the program. So I have, well, I really want to answer this question. Now, it sounds like none of you get a letter and, so I'll just get through this as, as quickly as I can. And then, and then Rick will talk about um, what I call patent infringement 101 because I, I think a lot of people don't understand what it involved, what kind of cost it traditionally involved. And then um, David from, from Article 1 will be talking about um, the new way that they, 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 have, they have come up with to find prior art to, possible, to, to maybe dealing with this issue. And then we'll end with um, 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 Yamo talking about um, a, a interesting article. So, so just, let's just hear me out, right? So, if you get a letter and I say it's important to panic, okay, it's, 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 it's normal. So you go panic for a couple of days. So I can tell you what I went through is it's what I mean a lot of us um, talk about is roller coaster, emotional roller coaster. One day you wake up saying, this is done. Why am I, why am I spending so much time doing this? I'll go back to Fannie Mae and make more money, okay? And, um, and the next day you wake up and say, I'm going to rage a holy war. I'm going to go, go all out. I don't care if I sell my houses and my, <laughs> my kids. I'm going after this guy. All the way to the spring court, right? Right. And um, so what I'm telling you guys, or whoever will be listening to this recording, if you get a letter, it's OK to think about these. Just go through your emotion, OK? So. Um, um, but do not make major decisions, <laughs> okay? Just, just go through it, just let it out, it's okay, right? Um, so, and I also will encourage you to scream about it, how bad these people are from your opinion and, and talk to your close friends and families. Don't go all out just yet, think about going all out, but don't, okay? So that's step one of the process.